What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and I realised straight from the word go that since coming back from Barbados I haven't done too much filming with my AMG GTS. I've done a lot of Lamborghini filming so today I am driving back from the Ipswich area. I'm currently at a disused RAF base. I've just been taking part in some secret TV filming which I can't tell you too much about but obviously as time progresses I'll be able to tell you a lot more about it. I am 110 miles away from my home in Watford. I've got about 150 miles in this car of fuel so what I want to do is talk to you guys and do a classic fuel economy run and put this car to the test on just how good it is at fuel with a V8 by turbo. This car should be better than my R8 and Lamborghini. So let's just jump into the car straight away, get on the motorway. The one thing that I've noticed about driving up here is it is one of the highest concentrated places for petrol stations. And I'm gonna completely ignore all of them and try and get home with the fuel that I've got. So it's been quite a while since I have done a fuel economy run. I've done a few challenges here and there, I've done one against Sam, which was in Europe. But it's been quite a long time since I've done a proper fuel economy run talking about MPG and this is the first time that I've done it with the AMG GTS. A disused RAF base is not probably the best place to start. <laughs> Woohoo! I've got so much room! <laughs> this is why I love this car. Just downshifting. I don't even know where I'm going. Can you just put your foot down a little bit? so easy to slide and this is probably the first time, not the last, that I'm able to legally power slide this car. I mean how cool is that? So the first bit of this video I'm getting opposite lock on a fuel economy run. It's not the best video to start in. The brilliant thing about this car is not only that I'm sitting pretty much over my rear wheels, meaning that I've got a fantastic feel for the back end of the car. The AMG is just so balanced and actually quite easy to predict when the car is going to start losing traction and oh, it's just a lot of fun to be behind the wheel of as soon as I get onto it. <laughs> okay now I need to put it in comfort. Back into automatic. The start-stop technology is in auto. I'm gonna get the trip reading on first. Okay, so now I'm gonna get all of my trip information up onto the screen here and we can go through. So from start, my average is 21 miles an hour. My MPG is 16.4, which I'm gonna to have to do well to get up. Now the interesting element to this video is even though I'm traveling 110 miles, usually around the UK, if you're traveling 110 miles, 95% of the journey would be on a motorway. However, this is a lot of country roads, a few dual carriageways, and then the M25, which can be so unpredictable. I could hit awful traffic, but it also could be a breeze and I could be able to cruise around at 60 miles an hour. But what I want to use this video to do more so is not only educate me, but also tell you guys just how good this car is on fuel. So I'm gonna do my best to test the car's fuel economy at different cruises, different cruise controls. So I remember in my RA, the best speed to drive at was 60 miles an hour, which is granny speed. But at the same time, it was very good. I could get nearly 500 miles out of a tank, which did cost around 85, 90 pounds to fill up. The Lamborghini, a little bit more money to fill up, less miles to the gallon and also less miles out of that full tank. I would get around 300 miles out of a 100 pound tank, whereas this car costs around 65, 70 quid to fill up. And I'm averaging around 350 to 400 miles. On a good run, I can get 450. Losing a bar so early on and having my MPG down at 16.4 to begin with from mucking around on the airfield means that 
Oh, it's gone up. My MPG from start is 17.4, so I've already gained a mile per gallon. So we have hit a dual carriageway. The speed limit is still 40 miles an hour, which I'm currently doing. And my MPG has increased to 19. My fuel is still saying just under half a tank. My trip reader is saying 135 miles left to go. I don't think my original race mode XRAF base antics helped, but I couldn't turn down that opportunity. So now I need to turn. You're not in my blind spot anymore. Stage one of the brilliance of the four litre bi-turbo V8 that is in front of me. Second car I've owned with the engine in front of me. The Vauxhall Astra was the first one. I'm currently sitting now not sitting at 60 mile an hour on the cruise control because I'm coming up to a roundabout. However, I was just cruising at 60 mile an hour because that is the speed limit on this dual carriageway and I have got my MPG up to 21. So it is climbing incredibly quickly. Here we go, I'm accelerating. I'm gonna accelerate out to 60 mile an hour, which will be the safe speed to join this dual carriageway on and then I will assess the situation and then maybe raise it up to 70 mile an hour or stick to 60 and see how we get on because my MPG is at 21 and it's just chilling right there. So let's see how we get on. I'm sitting behind a truck at the moment. I've got a Maserati 4200 about to overtake me right about now. 3200 actually. It's the older one, x wrench The one thing that I feel that this car is missing and maybe that's because I haven't discovered it yet, is a live MPG reader. Because all I'm getting at the moment is my average from the start of my journey, which started off with me power sliding in race mode. I just got overtaken by that massive lorry because I'm cruising <laughs> 55 miles an hour. But it's good for my fuel economy, sir, so please excuse me. Why? <laughs> Traffic lights. Do you know what? Driving up to Ipswich and sort of turning off of the M25 so soon into a journey and then taking A roads, which are the dual carriageways, roundabouts, traffic lights, things like this that I just, I'm not used to on road trips. Although I can't gain fuel in terms of the bars of fuel, it's going up. My fuel economy is going up. And the reason that it goes up is because the Mercedes system is so clever that it calculates each mile that you are doing and the way that you've been driving it. So it calculates your driving style in a similar fashion to the Lamborghini and the R8, but this is obviously a lot more intelligent being newer. So as I came off the M25 on the way up here, I did about an hour and a half of driving doing these roads of cruising at relatively low speeds because the weather was atrocious. So I was doing start, stop, I was accelerating, I was slowing down, and my fuel economy obviously wasn't that good. My average of driving up here wasn't that good. Whereas now I'm driving back and I'm actually consciously thinking about how I'm driving, trying to slow down. The air conditioning is still on because it's 17 degrees outside in England, England. That's hot. <laughs> um, so, I'm just cruising and my fuel economy is going back up. The amount of miles that I'm gaining out of the fuel that I've already got in my fuel tank, I'm producing more miles than the car originally thought that I was able to produce at the beginning of the journey. That's quite clever. I also think this is totally ironic because I've never had a journey where I've come across so many service stations before. And I don't know why that is, but we've just passed one and there is another one right here, less than a mile down the road. <laughs> like, so I thought, why not do one on the way back and drive past all of these fuel stations, but not stop at one of them. The other side of that bush, there is an Esso station right there. I don't know whether you saw that, but there's another one. Very nice color on that Audi. Also, very nice color on that Range Rover Evoque. True blood as well. <laughs> so right now, 
I am not only passing another services right there with a two-storey McDonald's, but I am at cruise control 60 mile an hour. There are a lot of cars on this road, both going that way and this way, so it's unsafe to do it any faster. But cruising at 60 mile an hour, it is a very, very capable car. It's also a very smooth car, despite the road quality on this particular road. I don't know what it's called. It's not great. But my fuel economy, I've lost another bar of fuel, but my fuel range is still going up. So I'm on 175 miles of fuel left, but obviously I'm doing miles. I'm using fuel to do these miles. So surely I should be going down right about now, but I'm coming up to a quarter of a tank, which is three bars. I'm doing 25.6 MPG at 60 miles an hour, which is totally mental. I remember in my Audi R8 getting 28 mpg was like so rare. Naturally aspirated V8, 2007 car. All of these new technologies and engineering breakthroughs that Mercedes are doing, the mega budgets that they've got to plow into a project like the AMG GTS makes this car so good at doing something like, I could plow my foot down now and this is an out and out supercar, but at the moment it is a super GT and I am thoroughly enjoying the drive. The weather is beautiful. The panoramic sunroof is enabling the sun and all of the light to come in. This is a very interesting what is happening on my computer right about now. So I have been driving for the last 10, 15 minutes at 70 miles an hour on the cruise control, 70 miles an hour. And it is stuck on 28.5 MPG. It has been like that for quite some time now, which is making me think that it is now starting to even out, it is starting to work out that this is basically what my average is going to sit at if I continue sitting at this speed. Sounds like a throaty motorbike. Currently some traffic lights about to turn onto the M25. Still staying at 28.8. I wonder what happens. Let's do something a little bit stupid. I'm, I'm going to put my foot down and see what happens. <laughs> 28.5. And that was a short burst. All of that hard work. So three seconds and it's back down to 28.5. <laughs> Pretty damn good news. I have not hit traffic on the M25. This must be the first time in about a month that I haven't hit a traffic jam. I may be speaking too soon, but I am traveling at quarter past 12 in the afternoon. So not many people are driving on the M25 at this time. It's just a very quiet time usually and this particular sector of the M25 as well is a really good time to drive so I'm cruising also good news 29.1 mpg I'm down to about 150 miles of fuel and I've got three bars left which is a quarter of a tank so I have gone from just about half of a tank yeah just under half a tank I think I had to a quarter of a tank and I'm about 10 minutes from home. It has been a relatively long and boring drive, made a little bit interesting by spotting so many petrol stations, but just being in this cockpit is such a lovely place to be. So comfortable, so relaxing, and so good and clinical, and Mercedes have absolutely nailed it. So I really wasn't expecting this video to go the way that it's gone, but it has. So I think being so close to home and so comfortable on fuel, I was about to say fumes. Being so comfortable on fuel, I think I'm just going to wrap this video up. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you love the AMG and you think the Mercedes is a good choice in replacement to the Lamborghini. I certainly think so, so maybe I'm going to like my own video this time. I don't do it, but I might like my own video because after what I've just said, I probably should. Subscribe if you haven't already because there's going to be a lot more cool stuff happening. Unfortunately, this year, Monaco F1 is not happening. 
I have got a flight booked for tomorrow, which as this video is going live at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, I should be in Monaco right about now. But I will explain, I will make a video on why I'm not in Monaco for the Formula One this weekend. It is a shame, I'm gutted, but at the same time, I'm gonna have a lot of fun back here in the UK producing some pretty cool content. So that's it. Last thing, I apologize for not actually showing you the outside of my car on this particular video. I haven't had anyone to film with me. It is me, myself, my GoPro, and my other camera. So thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you on Thursday. Cheers guys.